Hello and welcome to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I'm Joel. You all know Teddy. The main attraction, the reason everybody keeps coming back. We are here to do our monthly wrap-up for the month of February. I can't believe we're already into March. I know, it's crazy. What has happened? Oh, there was a squirrel on the tree. <laughs> there was a squirrel on the tree. And <laughs> we might be about to lose Teddy. Yeah, he's going to go. Run, yeah, he, he would like to go check that out. So we've lost Teddy, but you got to see him. <laughs> so that's something. Yeah. But anyway, we are going to wrap up the reading month that was February. How was your February? Actually, really good. I yeah. um, I read some really fun books. Yeah. Me too. It's a bit of a mixed bag. I read some that were a little disappointing, some that I really liked. But, you know, that's kind of the way things go. So how many books did you end up reading? I read nine books. Nine books, and I read eight. Look at you, overachiever. I know. <laughs> well, one was really small. Well, two were small, so. And actually, one of mine was really small, too, to be fair. I read, I, one of my audiobooks was an hour and a half long. And so. I really pushed myself to get rushed through one so Greg and I could talk about it together because yeah. it was an interesting book. Yeah, and it was something that I read in February and we kind of wanted to see if we could get it together so yeah. we could both talk about it here. Teddy ran in and ran right back out. <laughs> if he comes back, we'll yeah. try to get him back. But for now, he's just going to... Yeah. Squirrels are a huge enticement for him. It, it's just it, the way it is. So since you have nine, do you want to go first? Sure, I can go first because... Um, one will tie into something we did together. Okay. Okay. So the first book I did was called Alive by Piers Paul Reed. Um, it was about the 1972, non nonfiction, 1972 plane with the Uruguayan soccer team that crashed in the was Andes. Was it soccer or rugby? Rugby. Rugby. Uh, that crashed in the Andes, uh, for 72 days. I think so. And, um... You had sent me a podcast, and yes. I read the podcast, and I was horrified and crying. And yeah. So you're wrong about the podcast I love did an episode about that plane crash. So when you first expressed interest in a book, I sent you the podcast, and it ended up piquing your interest. It so did. you went to a book that spent more time on it. Right, so I read the book, which was really good. And then after I read the book, we watched Society of Snow, yes. which is based, a new movie based on it. And in the United States is on Netflix. Yeah. Um, the I really enjoyed the movie. It was yeah. it, it was really hard to watch. It's um, upsetting, they, for sure. They crash 45 people on the plane, and I think by the end of 72 days, 16, 16 people survived. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing that 16 survive, honestly. Yeah. And it was, um, there was some cannibalism, uh, yeah. which was a big factor in the book of, um, I think, trying to justify it and how they really kind of justified it is the will to live. And um, they were a very religious group of kids. Yeah. They were like 19 to 20, 22. They're young kids. Yeah. I think and, like the... The pilot, the pilots didn't last very long, but there were a like I think there was a married couple that was like in their thirties, but most yeah. of them are in that window, nineteen to twenty. Nineteen twenty, really great book, yeah. in very interesting movie, very graphic. Yeah. Oh gosh, it, it's upsetting, but it is. I, I was telling Joel, it's like I feel like if it was an American-made movie, it would be in contention for a lot more Oscars than it is because I think it's nominated for foreign film, makeup, and that's it. But the cinematography was absolutely is amazing. gorgeous. Yeah. And if you do watch it, there's a documentary, a 34-minute documentary on it as well, of kind of how they filmed it. And it's actually very cool. Yeah, it's, it's called Society of the Snow, Who We Were on the Mountain. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was my first book. Um, really enjoyed it. Mm. It kind of went along my Arctic um, survivalist kind of thing. So, actually, it's still I, cold. Sorry, go ahead. No, but still cold and... Mm true and just the grit to live so i was kind of wondering and i haven't i'm asking you live <laughs> i guess because <laughs> i just i hadn't actually asked you so is it that you really like arctic books or are you really into survival books i think it'd be survival books okay um, because i mean how you're up against the elements mm -hmm. and Really having the will to survive, mm. the will to um, help others, um, 
But I do like the Arctic books. Yeah. But um, I, I think I feel like any Arctic book kind of becomes a survival book. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, but I think it's kind of the survival. And um, I knew what I was getting into with Alive, but mm. I wanted to watch it and read it anyway. Mm. Um, it's just how you live 75 days without food and water. Yeah. And, yeah. Well. Some and that's food, but. well, yeah, and but that that was the thing because you burn many more calories in that in the environment. Yeah. So you, how do you get enough calories to survive? I mean, they survive the plane wreck, and they get every the the deceased people out, the life people, injured people, and and then they have a avalanche on top of them, yeah. and that crushes a lot and kills a lot. They get that all cleared out, and it's just like and then one just thing the after journey. another that some of them undertake to try to get help. help. It's, it's an, it's an, it, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the story, but yeah. it is incredible to learn details yeah. about it. So, so either the book, the movie, or that episode of you're wrong about is really powerful as well. Like I cried listening to that episode. Oh, it's so. horrific. Yeah. So, and my... uh, some of the people are still alive and actually yeah. participated in the making, the making of the movie. Yeah. Um, so one um, there were a couple of med students on the plane, and that's how they any medical care care they got was from a med student. Yeah, uh, I think one there were two, is, two of them. Yeah. yeah, one of the survivors is a I think he's retired now, hmm. but a pediatric cardiology surgeon. Yeah, so, so he went on to do a lot. So they I think he does some speaking engagements and yeah. Um, so, interesting book. I liked it a lot. Yeah, clearly, because we spent a lot of time talking about that one book. But it also involved a movie. And yeah. yeah. So, it, it became a whole big part of February. Yeah. What'd you do? So, my first book in the month of February was Neighbors and Other Stories by Diane Oliver. This was something that I wanted to at least kind of nod to Black History Month, even if I wasn't going to be doing like a whole set of reading about it. And so, my first two books are kind of nods in that direction. And Diane Oliver died in 1966 when she was only i know a good year right good year <laughs> uh she was only 21 or 22 years old it was in a motorcycle accident and she had written a bunch of stories but this is the first time that her stories have been collected together into a collection and it, it the intention is sort of to restore her to uh help make a name for her because she had the stories are great and I really love that they are helping her be discovered uh, because her stories have been really great. And, but now they're really trying to get them out there. And they are very good stories. I would say if you are someone who struggles with short story collections, that this would not be the book for you to start. Because the stories don't... When you read a story collection, a lot of the time they feel like they all go together and fit, feel like they have a theme. And these you can kind of tell some of them were not necessarily intended to go into a collection with the others. So it feels a little disjointed. However, they are extremely well-written. Um, overall, there are a little bit of ups and downs, so I thought it was mostly just okay. But I think it, it really, it is a testament to a talent that was lost. So that was how I kicked off my month. Sweet. What did you have next? My next one was All the Sinners Bleed uh, by S.A. Cosby. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love this book yeah um i like s.a cosby a lot um he did um razor blade tears uh which is just right <laughs> over my shoulder <laughs> and um the i always say the wrong name blacktop wasteland blacktop i wasteland. had to think about it <laughs> i always call it something else and he always cracks me and um i love his writing it's it's dark it's it's Dark, dark, dark. Mm. Um, All the Sinners Bleed is pretty dark. It's about... I don't want to get into it because when you get to the twist of the book, it just shocks you. And But it's about a black sheriff in a very southern town. And he has to deal with a lot of racism. And um, a lot of things happen. And um, you, the um, Titus, the sheriff, and the um, main character of the book absolutely love him he's a very genuine law-abiding citizen who wants to do the right thing take care of his hometown and you just love him yeah. and he goes up against a lot of stuff so wow great book yeah i've 
consistently hear great things about S.A. Cosby, not just from you. Mm -hmm. Charlie from Montana Book Company and Abby from Montana Book Company are huge fans of Razor Blade Tears. So I feel like that's the one I want to prioritize. Yeah. And because his books are frequently described as dark, violent, uh, maybe a little upsetting, I have held off for a little bit, but I think this year I'm going to be ready. I just need to, maybe on the other side of Ireland, because <laughs> I'm reading, I've committed to Irish books yeah. this month, and then by the, so that's March, and then April, I might cram in a couple of other things, and then we're in Ireland in May, and then June is Pride Month, I, so we're into the second half of the year before I'll probably get to it, but I think I'm ready. I think so. You should. I think sure. I should. Finally. Okay. What'd you have? <laughs> All right, so my next one was Diva 2.0, Life Lessons from Me to You by Cheryl Lee Ralph. I love her. Oh, laugh if you must. I like her. And, you know, I, I, it was a rough January. Yeah. It's a, I really wasn't feeling well through January into February and finally mid-February. Like, around your birthday. Like, your, birth, your birthday was, like, the first day I started feeling like a human again. Thank yeah. goodness. But you still had a rough go up Still was rough. That. So I needed some you know energy some joy and i she was nominated for an audio award for uh this book and it also meets a prompt for the montana book company challenge where it is like self-help or development book so i decided to do it because it was available on script and i just I, I love her some people have rupaul i have Cheryl Lee ralph gave me a lot of power and she had, she does have an interesting life story and way of approaching things it is very religious in some parts but not too i mean not too much and she is one of um the uh, she is a christian person who believes in acceptance of other people which is really nice and i appreciate that so it, it was fun it was it was everything that i needed just like uplifted me so i could get into the rest of February, and it's nice. If you're not familiar with Cheryl Lee Ralph, mm -hmm. uh, she was one of the original Dream Girls. Yes, um, in the Beyonce role. Beyonce yeah. played her part in the movie, right? And she's also in Abbott Elementary, which is a great uh, sitcom on TV. Yes, so she won an Emmy she's for that. Just a fun, fun lady. Nope, Teddy's back, but he's lying down, oh, so we won't be able to get him back in. So that was my next book. And uh, it was just joy. And it's really short. So if you yeah. ever need something for, I like, got, a road yeah. trip or something, I'd say check it out. I will. So, yeah. That was right. me. What's you? Uh, my next one was, we talked about last month, was Dog Songs about Mary Ol uh, by Mary Oliver. Yes. It's a collection of poetry, but all the poetry is around a dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some really... This was a gift from a dear friend of mine, mm -hmm. Libby. And... um it was just an absolute great read. Yes. I'm not a poetry person. Neither one of us are poetry no, people. I struggle to get into poetry but a lot. It makes sense. It's mm. just, it's really, really a great book. And yeah, I love it. Yeah, it is. And what was the, page 51? Yeah. Will you read it for me again? I will read it for I you again. I love this poem. Okay. It's called Little Dog's Rhapsody in the Night. He puts his cheek against mine and makes small expressive sounds, and when I'm awake or awake enough, he turns upside down, his four paws in the air, and his eyes dark and fervent. Tell me you love me, he says. Tell me again. Could there be a sweeter arrangement? Over and over, he gets to ask, I get to tell. <laughs> it's really it's cute. Teddy. It's, it's so Teddy. Teddy. It's totally Teddy. But it's yeah. a, it is also Guinness it's and Jamie. It's Guinness and Jamie. But it is very Teddy. But yeah. we have actually started keeping this book with Goodness and Jamie, because if you know a dog person, even if they're not into poetry, this is like a that is the perfect book. gift. So thank you, Libby. It was yes. spot Beautiful. on. Beautiful. Spot on. That was mine. So my next one, <laughs> this one, was some. Yeah, this is the one that Joel was racing to fit in by the end of the month so we could talk about it together. Oh. So if you follow along, you know we are both big Matt Cain fans. We were given a copy of The Secret Life of Albert Antwistle after losing Guinness by Erica from The Broken Spine. And we read it at the same time. Yeah. I read it in print. You listened to the audio. Oh, yeah. So I think you finished it just a little bit ahead of me. But we read it at the same time. And it really helped us work through a lot of the grief that we were feeling and feel empowered. It's just, it's just a beautiful book. Great book. And then last year, Matt Cain released Becoming Ted, but Becoming Ted was only available in the UK. It will be released in the US in June. And we ordered a copy from the UK because we didn't want to wait. And that's another great book. So this one was released 
in, I don't remember if it was January or February, but this year, only in the UK, but we pre-ordered it from Gays the Words, so we got this signed copy. And I think all of our, we have all three copies, and I think they're all signed. Is Except Secret for Life? Ad, Secret Life is yeah, not. So I think Becoming uh, Ted is. Becoming Ted, and this yes. is both signed by Matt Cain. So we, there's no way we weren't going to read the new Matt Cain. So we ordered it from the UK, and here it is from Gays the Word. And this one we did the other way. So we read Secret Life of Albert Entwistle basically at the same time. You right. finished a little bit ahead of me, but basically at the same time. Then you read Becoming Ted, right. and it was like a month before I read it too. And now this time I read it. <laughs> I read One Love. And I, I like had to wait to talk about it with you. So I rushed through so, it because it's ooh. an interesting book. I made a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah, it is a very interesting book. Well, so th this is the thing, and this is something that we have talked about a lot. It's hard to really describe this book without giving stuff away because I feel like it's described as a rom-com, but there's a twist on a rom-com and to talk about it too much gives a lot away. And I think, and we talked about this as well, this feels a little very different from the other two books of his that we've read because The Secret Life of Albert Entwistle is very straightforward. Albert Entwistle is a man who has lived a very sort of repressed, quiet life. He's intentionally shut a lot of people out. He just basically does his job and then he has a very quiet home life and that's it. And he works as a mail carrier for the Royal Mail in the UK. And he finds out that he is being forced into retirement in the very first chapter and the rest of the... So you know what's going to happen. The rest of the book is about his journey discovering himself again and finding the courage to kind of get back out into the world and open up to other people and let other people in. And it's a very straightforward journey. Becoming Ted, in the first chapter, Ted gets dumped by his husband and then over the course of the book sort of realizes that he had been in an abusive relationship. Uh, emotionally abusive, emotionally. but it's still abusive. And, again, is discovering himself, opening up to the world, pursuing things that he has wanted to do that he hasn't allowed himself to do because of this relationship. So they're very straightforward journeys. And this one, you kind of need to get to the end for it to really reveal itself to you. But the premise is you have two men, Guy and Danny, who meet on the very first day that they attend a college in Manchester in the UK. And both of them arrive i think got for guy it's more of a spontaneous decision after meeting right. danny but danny hasn't arrived in manchester intending to come out of the closet and explore who he actually is and then guy kind of follows along and they are friends for the next 20 years so you have two plot lines 2022 which is the present and or as close to the present as you get yeah. in the book and starting in 2002 when they meet so you sort of go back and forth and these parts in 2002 that move up tell you the story of their friendship. And in 2022, Danny and Guy are going to Manchester for Manchester Pride for a weekend because they haven't really been back. And they're both like single and feeling like they, wa they want to reconnect and uh, go back to the place where they their friendship began. And Danny has decided to use this weekend to confess to Guy that he has been in love with him for the whole 20 years that they have known each other. And it's a really interesting journey from there. Yeah. Uh, I will say, <laughs> until the last chapter, you will want to hate this book. It's th That's the thing. This is a thornier book. Yeah, very. Than Albert Entwistle and Becoming Ted. Because, again, you kind of have to get to the end to f to really know what it's doing. And I think... You can read Secret Life of Albert Entwistle on your own. Right. You can read Becoming Ted on your own. The really fun thing about One Love has been me reading it and then you reading it and then us talking about it. Yeah. So this is kind of a book you need to buddy read with somebody else so you can talk about it, you know. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> there is a lot to talk about because you finished it like yeah. two, three days ago. Yeah. And we've been talking about it. We're Pretty still good. today. We're still talking about it. Yeah. But we also went, oh, I'd give it a three. I, no, I think I'm going to give it a four. And yeah. And today I'm like, God, should I give it a five? <laughs> yeah. And I think when I first finished it, because I liked the way it ended, I think I gave it like a 4.5 on the story mm -hmm. graph. And then I lowered it to a four. Then I was like, ah. 
But it's, you know, I think 3.5. And then after t starting to talk to you about it again, I ra raised it up to a 4. Yeah. So it's just, like, definitely a thornier, interesting book that you kind of can't talk about without giving stuff away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. it has been really fun going on a journey, reading and discussing with you. Yeah. So, again, I feel like this is, like... If you have a Joel in your life or like a, just a nice gay friend or somebody you can buddy read with. So if you do read this, you know, reach out to Greg and I. Yeah. We will definitely talk through it with you. We'll be your gay friends. We'll be your, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be your little gay buddies and yeah. we'll do a buddy read. So yeah. we've read it. We loved it. And yeah. um, Interesting, convers you. Interesting conversations to be had about yeah. that book. But it's very different from the other two, yeah. I would say. And I couldn't really talk about it too much because I wanted you to be able to experience it. So I don't know what I knocked over, but I had I, knocked over something. I think it's my list. <laughs> oh, no. For pause. All right, we're back. We have and, Teddy. We got my list. Yeah, every, everything is sorted out. And <laughs> I figured since we were sort of... I didn't uh, stop recording, but we're going to cut that out. I decided... I would just see if I could get Teddy back. So here he yeah. is. Yeah. So that was, One Love was my next book. Yeah. Um, my next yours? one, I'm going to throw, there's two books. They were in a series and one was kind of a bonus feature. But last month, if you watched our video, I read Him by yes. Ellie Kennedy. And this month I read Us mm -hmm. and Epic. Yeah. Uh, by Ellie Kennedy. And so. I'm still really confused by the left turn that the final title in that trilogy takes. <laughs> that makes but, sense. When you read it, it yeah. makes sense? Okay, yeah. there you go. It makes sense. It's about um, two gay hockey players that meet in high school at a hockey camp. And um, the first one, him, is how they get reacquainted um, because they kind of had a big kind of a misunderstanding mm. and weren't friends. The second one, they are now friends. They're boyfriends. They're living in Toronto together, but they have to keep the relationship on the down low because one is a professional hockey player. The other is a professional hockey coach for different teams. Mm. It gets very serious. And I absolutely really like this one. I think I like this one the best out of the three mm. um, because it does deal with homophobia coming out and being yourself and it was very interesting it, there's also a a very sad scene in there where somebody gets incredibly sick and um kind of what happens when mm -hmm. he gets sick so um there's a lot of caring in there and how you put others in front of yourself when it comes down to it so yeah. uh, it's actually really beautiful epic was kind of the little bonus feature of like a PS yeah. kind of thing. PS, okay. this is what happens next. Yay. Yeah. You do love... So whenever we watch a uh, romance, like a Hallmark movie, uh, or even when we read our romance books, you always love a one year later. <laughs> this is a man who lives for a one year later. <laughs> and... So the epic, epic, epic your one, is your one year yeah. later. So that made your heart happy, it didn't made it? Happy yeah. <laughs> heart. Um, it's a little steamy. There's a lot of sex scenes in there, which I kind of fast forward through in my little mind. Um, but the base of the story is actually really good. Hmm. So, so I think I might hold that in my back pocket for the next time I need a little cinnamon bun. Yeah, I'm. I will. I will catch you up on the hymn. I would say just Skip go into us. us okay. and it's a really good book. Good to know. Okay, that's so I'll mine. keep that in my back pocket. All right, and then my next one was Everything I Learned, I Learned in a Chinese Restaurant by Curtis Chin. This is nonfiction, and this is where I did a Friday Reads where I said, I had an unexpectedly gay week. <laughs> <laughs> because I think I finished One Love and Everything I Learned, I Learned in a Chinese Restaurant in the same week, and then I had started my what will be my next book. I think, actually, I finished that in the same week. So, like, yeah. anyway... Uh, yeah, so this is nonfiction, and it's really interesting. What I talked about, though, when I finished it was the ending is a little unsatisfying because Curtis Chin grows up in his family's Chinese restaurant to a large degree in Detroit, and a lot of the themes of the book are his struggles growing up, figuring out that he is gay, and wondering if his family will accept him and what will happen when he eventually comes out to them. And, I, you know, I, I feel like I would want you to know this if you were going to read the book. He does not ultimately come out to his family in this book. 
And another one of the... It feels like somebody commented and said, well, maybe he hasn't done it yet. But Although I feel like writing a book about being gay would be coming out to your family. <laughs> but uh, the book ends somewhere around 1990. And it feels like he did come out to them at some point after that. Another one of the struggles was their struggle keeping the business open, the restaurant. Partially because of the neighborhood they're in. They're in a very gritty neighborhood in Detroit that, it, you know, it, it, they go through the uh, big riot that happened there. A lot of that it was happening around their neighborhood. And it, it is a neighborhood with a lot of crime. They talk about ways they try to minimize the crime for the restaurant and all of that. But there's a, an ongoing worry, especially from his parents, about whether or not the re they are going to be able to keep the restaurant open. But then the book ends, and then one of the I, one of the first things that I saw when I Googled what happened to his life after is that the restaurant closed in 2020. Mm -hmm. Or tw not even, 2000. So the restaurant closed a long time ago, and that's not in the book. So it feels like it's a really interesting book that just kind of ends without resolving a lot of the things that are huge points in the book. So it almost feels like it needs a part two. So it's really interesting but it doesn't resolve a lot of the things that are big issues for him in the book and for his family. So I really liked it, but it feels like it needs a part two to resolve a lot of that stuff. So I just, if you were going to read it, I would kind of want you to know it feels like, and I don't know if he's going to write a sequel, <laughs> but it feels like it needs one. So you're probably going to be getting Teddy snores because <laughs> he is snoring right he now. Is. We took him for a walk before we filmed this and, uh, and we took him to, so, in Montana, there are coffee stands. Our favorite is Florence Coffee. Although, there's one coming to Missoula that you are really excited I about. I loving. But uh, whenever we stop there, he gets a bone. And he was all over it. So, anyway, he's had a whole day. <laughs> and now the squirrel. So, yeah. yeah so, so, what was your next book? Um, my next one was... <laughs> The Royal Wolf Murders uh, by Keith McCafferty. Uh, it's a big series that started, I mean, he started writing the series in 1990s. Yeah. And um, I was looking for kind of a outdoor um, murder mystery series, and I was so bored by this. Yeah. Um, but it is a fly fishing um, murder, because a royal wolf is a fly fish like a tie? Tie, tie, yeah. yeah. And um, we live in Montana, but we have never been fly fishing. fishing. Yeah. And I would do it, but. I was about to say I would, yeah. no, would not do it. So I would not, but he would. <laughs> but there's a whole chapter on somebody says, oh, I'm not catching anything. So the guy says, oh, make this kind of a fly with this kind of a line, with this kind of a hook, and mm -hmm. this kind of a. It's like a whole chapter on a type of fly and hook and line yeah. and he did it and he caught fish. So um, I'm not a fisherman. It really bored me. It was slow. The murder itself was actually interesting, Yeah, but too much was going on and it just wasn't for me. And it, it is a shame because you were also really excited, not just because it what was Alice Henderson and who's the other one that you Claire really, Kells. Claire Kells that you really liked last year. So you were trying to find something like that, but also uh, McCafferty is a Montana author. Yeah. Walk into any bookstore <laughs> in Montana, you will see every book he has published featured prominently in the store. Yeah. So it would have been really good, and you really wanted to support like a local I author, did. but it, you know, you know, you know I, don't, I think it's safe to say you're not going to continue with the series. No, if I get really bored, maybe I'll try book two, and if it's mm. bait, fly fish based, I'll say, like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Uh, so my next one was one last song by Nathan Evans. If you will do the honors, since I will. my arm is crushed under a talk right now. So this was the, the uh, third of my uh, unexpectedly gay week. It's really quick. You could dunk this in your coffee. It's very tiny. Uh, I had ordered it from the UK. I think I found out about this book from Bob the Bookerer. I could be wrong about that. I think he posted about it, and then I just immediately needed a copy, so I ordered it from the UK. It sounds yeah. cute. And Bob the Booker did do an interview with the author, so if you want, uh, I'll link his channel down below. Go check it out. It is a really interesting book. So the premise of it is that you have two men, Joan and Jim, 
uh, Joan's real name is John, but he kind of likes to, he's, he's been an activist his whole life. So he kind of likes to be flamboyant and in your face. He is a flamboyant person, but he kind of likes to be in your face about not conforming to things. He's not non-binary, but he likes confusing people by using a woman's name instead of John. So they both end up in a care home and at first they really don't like each other at all but they get to know each other and a little bit of a romance develops between them but it is also very aware that they're you know they're both in a care home so it's sort of the last chapter of their life uh and it's a little bit about uh it's inspired by i think a documentary that talked about you know all of these gay activists people who were at like stonewall and how they are now aging and in care homes and sort of the difficulties that they face. So I kind of fully admit from the cover of the book, I expected this to be very light and fluffy and cinnamon bun. And it is actually pretty serious, although there are very funny elements of it because they face discrimination from the other people who are in the care home with them who decide that like, I don't want you to sit near me anymore. They face discrimination from the people who are running the care home and who are supposed to be caring for them who don't really know what to do with gay people in their care home. And that it's really interesting for that. And it, it's a very heartfelt book, so I would recommend it. Uh, but it's not available in the U.S. right now, but it was easy enough to get a copy from the U.K. So that was my next book. What do you have? My next book was delicious. <laughs> and I can say that because yeah. it's Mrs. Quinn's Rise to Fame. Which I am currently reading, but I'm only 15% in. By Olivia Ford. Yeah. I really can't say a whole lot. I really want to go into this book. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. So uh, Mrs. Quinn is a 77-year-old woman who is married to her husband for almost 60 years. She applies for Britain Bakes, so kind of Great British Bake Off. Yeah. And um, every chapter is a, it, it sounds like a recipe. Every chapter is about a food. Uh, that's like a real, tea loaf tea is loaf one of the and, chapters early and on. shortbreads. Yeah. And, um, Black Forest Gateau. Mm. Um, but everything, it's a little bit Slumdog Millionaire. Oh. Everything from her past and what she has done, um, cooking and baking and doing everything, comes forward to today. Mm. And it's another book that goes um, from present day to past day. Okay. And I absolutely love this book. I really want to talk about it, but I can't with Greg right yet until you get far <laughs> into it. He doesn't want, he's worried that he's going to spoil something know, for me. I can't because <laughs> it's like, where do you stop talking about this? Hmm. But she goes to Great Britain, uh, Britain Bakes. She kind of feels she doesn't have a purpose in life, and this is her chance to have a legacy, hmm. have a purpose, yeah. leave something behind. Which is interesting because in the fifth, I'm only fifteen percent of the way into the audio, but that is one of the things because the application asks what is what is your great achievement in life, and she really struggles answering that question. So she actually answers it honestly, honestly by saying like the only achievement I've had is my marriage, and they were about to celebrate the, what do they call it their golden anniversary, which is sixty diamond, diamond, diamond. which is sixty. It's almost sixty. She talks about that's the only thing. So this is me stepping out to achieve yeah. something for myself before I go. Um, it's beautiful on her journey. Mm. It's beautiful about where she's been. Mm. I, I can't say a whole lot. <laughs> she, she doesn't feel like she's left something. And her journey shows her of what she has left behind. Mm. I love this book. Um, I, mm. I think it's going to probably... I did not like how it ended because in my mind i had a better ending yeah i think because we talked about it before you got to the finish and yeah you had a very set idea of what you wanted to happen yeah, and it in didn't exactly happen that mm -hmm. way but if you like baking it's a journey for a person who doesn't feel like they have something mm -hmm. it's an absolute beautiful book i think it's going to be in my top it's mm -hmm. in my top right yeah. now yeah one, it's early in the year. One, but, two, or three, but yeah. it's in my top because of her journey and what she's done. Yeah. So. I actually didn't start it on the last day of February. I think I started it on March 1st. So you'll hear about it again at the end of March. So I know I said I was going to be doing Irish reading, but once you finished the book, you were like, uh, no, uh, you, you have, have to, to do this right now. <laughs> so I'm starting March off with that on audio, and I'll, I'll talk about it. And then uh, everything else I'm reading in March will so. hopefully be 
Irish. When you put it into so. your Friday reads after you're done, I may join you so I can like. Okay. Talk to <laughs> That'll be fun. So I'll try to maybe I'll try to finish it this week okay. and we'll see because no when you get home, you, you'll, yeah. you get hooked in this book. Yeah, you really get hooked. Yeah. What do you have? <laughs> uh, so my next one is something that you had encouraged me to read. Me? You. Me. To the Moon and Back by <laughs> N.R. Walker. So okay. last year, we listened to three N.R. Walker books together. Basically, in that series, there's a fictional small town in Montana that's really into Christmas because all of them are set at Christmas. And you had already listened to the first book in the series. Tic Tac Mistletoe. Tic Tac Mistletoe. So we listened to the second and then the third on road trips. And then for another road trip, you went back and listened to Tic Tac Mistletoe for me. Yeah. So we did all three of those last year. And N.R. Walker does great male-for-male romances. They're really good because we go into romances looking for connection between the protagonists. And there is sex in all of them, to varying degrees. I would say I think the second book in the Heartbridge series has the least amount of sex. Yeah. And none of them have, like, a lot. But it is there. Um, but we're really in it for the connection between the, the people. We want that sweet romance sense and they're good for that so you had read and loved to the moon and back and i had kind of you know similar to how i just said i'm going to put the hockey books in my back pocket i had done that with this one and then i kind of started thinking it's like that would be a great valentine's day book and then i didn't get it in on valentine's i did it like the week after but it was really good it's cute so you have gideon who is a gay man who's in a long-term relationship with a guy his sister has a baby that she does not want. He agrees to take the baby and adopt it. And then she's out of the picture completely. Like yeah. she even moves away somewhere else and just says she doesn't want anything to do with the baby. And her, oh, the squirrel's back. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's, oh, no, he saw it. Anyway, the long term boyfriend doesn't want, hadn't wanted to be a father. So he pretty quickly backs out of the situation and says, this is not for me. Good luck. So Gideon is left alone. His friends encourage him to hire a nanny. The nanny is, of course, male. Enter Toby, who is has been a nanny, has like a degree in child care and uh, like child development. And this is, of course, being a romance book, a live-in nanny situation. And of course, that, also gay. <laughs> also gay. They get to know each other, and sparks fly, and it's yeah. really cute. It's cute. Yeah, and it, it it's not really nice to see a, a gay family yeah. in a romance as well. And, you know, stories about... Because, you know, we are family-oriented as well, so it's nice to see that represented in a right. romance as well. That squirrel is just taunting, taunting. Teddy. Our little chicken nuggy. <laughs> yeah, our little chicken nuggy. <laughs> if you know, you know. You know. So that was my next one. We are running very long. So. I know. Sorry, not sorry. But <laughs> well, my next one's quick. My next one was One Love by Matt Cain. Uh, Which we talked about. We've already talked about. Yeah. I loved it. Get yourself a gay buddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and read it and talk about right. it. Because it is you? fun to talk about. So then I did Open Throat by Henry Hoke. Commonly known as the Gay Mountain Lion book. And it's like an hour and a half on audio. Uh, it was interesting. It didn't quite sit. Really, I mean, it's it's interesting. I didn't love it, so I'm. It's an hour and a half, so it's not, not like I feel like I wasted time, but um, it's interesting. And I talked about how the, the queer elements of the book are much more sidelined than what when people talk about the book. It, it seems like there are hints of queerness in the book, but you could easily read it and not pick up on any of that. So that was my next one. What do you have? Uh, my next oh, okay. one. Okay, he wants to go explore <laughs> for my this girl. Quick, everything for you by Chloe Lease. Male and male romance. It was good. It's about two hockey players. I'm not a hockey. You are, really? I'm, not a hockey I'm supposed to be the hockey fan I in know. this family. <laughs> um, two hockey players that hate each other, mm. and they're co-coaches, but the head coach makes them get along so she pushes them into situations where they have to be together and get along like a romance does like a romance it was fun and and good except the mm. author makes one of the coaches and can i say this i mean i don't know what you're gonna say so so, <laughs> so let's and do it one of the the author makes one of the coaches into a Roy Kent from um, oh, Ted Lasso. Yeah. I mean, down to the black clothes, black furniture. Cursing a the, lot. 
dropping the F-bomb every minute, saying, oi, and grumbles and grunts. Yeah. It is Roy Kent. Yeah, I think verbatim. you could say that. You could say okay. that. Okay, verbatim, and I, I did not appreciate it. Because I think one thing, the way you were talking about it, it felt like reading fan fiction at a certain point, yeah. which you had not really signed up for, no. which is fair, yeah. I think. so. And it was like, one is a great cloud, and one is a ray of sunshine, mm -hmm. and... It was a lot. And I think the, like, grumpy sunshine trope in romance is not necessarily your thing. No. So. It can, but although it can work, because you really loved The Geek Who Saved Christmas, which is kind yeah, of... which is... Although he's not that grumpy in the grand scheme yeah. of things. So, so yeah. That, so, it came together in the end. It's over. It's done. So, that yeah. was fun. So, there was it. All good? All good. All good. All right. So, my final book of... February, what month are we talking about, was Northwoods by Daniel Mason. I wanted to read this really badly for a long time and finally got around to it. I definitely wanted to read it before the Pulitzer Prize announcement in May because I feel like this is a very heavy contender for the prize. It's one of the biggest, most awarded books from last year, from U.S. authors at least. And I kind of just thought it was okay. <laughs> I think, technically, it's a very well-done book. Brian from Bookish had actually commented on my Friday reads, and I have not responded yet, but I saw your comment, and I loved it, Brian, <laughs> um, saying that this feels like a writing exercise to show off all of Daniel Mason's writing skill, and I actually kind of agree with that, because you move through history uh, in the 1600s, two people sort of split off from their Puritan colony or community and create a cabin in the woods uh, in what is now Massachusetts, but back then was just the wilderness. And you sort of move ahead in time to the present day. So in the early chapters, Daniel Mason is basically writing in at least a nod to Old English. I'm not enough of a scholar to know how accurate it is, but he is writing in the style of people who, in the way they would have spoken at the time. And then as you move to the present, he it, the book takes on much more of a contemporary feel in the writing. And it does feel like that is sort of the exercise. So I wrote down a quote from page 39. History haunts him who does not honor it, which is great. I love what Daniel Mason is doing. But if the point is also to talk about what the human presence in North America has done over time, Annie Pru already did that better, I would say. So I appreciate this book. I think it's very well written. I, I don't think anybody is wrong to like this book, but it really didn't land for me. So I'm much more in the camp of the Heaven and Earth grocery store for the Pulitzer. But that's that's me. That's That was my last book. So everybody knows what I'm doing for the month of March because I did a whole video where I talked about my pile of possibilities, which is staring both of us in the face <laughs> because I haven't reshelved them. So that's I'll, I'll link the video down below if you haven't watched it. So what what do you have? going on in March. I'm going to do a couple of um, Irish books, too, because I am. St I just started oh, The Picture right. of Dorian Gray by yes. Oscar Wilde. Yes. Because we're going to go see the Oscar Wilde house while we're in Dublin. Yeah, we're at least going to walk by it. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey. There's a statue of him reclined on a rock that I'm really looking forward to seeing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so you're going to nod to some Irish books. Nod to some Irish. i got a Claire Keegan on my bookshelf mm -hmm. right now to do. So mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to join you with a little Irish. Okay. Maybe when we're going to wrap up, we'll have a Guinness. Oh, yeah, because we are going to go Jameson. Guinness or Jameson, because we, if you follow along, you know, we had dogs named Guinness and Jameson. And while in Ireland, we are, of course, going to the uh, Guinness Storehouse, is Storehouse, it? Storehouse, it's our... And the Jameson Distillery. distillery and the distillery. Yeah, so we're going to so, do that. Only for shirts. <laughs> only for shirts. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll probably do the and same. And for the dogs. Yeah, and I'll oh. probably do... Um, Couple of other things, but yeah, yeah, it may stick with some Irish theme. Yeah, you. So I, so I have like a very set plan for March, but you're gonna do what we both usually do, which is kind of mood read your way through the world. Anyway, <laughs> that's our February, <laughs> and I uh, would love to hear what you were reading and loving and all of that stuff. Yeah. If you have plans for what you're gonna be reading in March, let us know in the comment section down below. That squirrel is still running uh, all uh, over that no. tree, so we we should go check on Teddy. Yeah. <laughs> so. And as always, thank you. This ended up being a bit of a long one. But hopefully it was fun. It's always fun it's to always sit and fun with talk you. with you. Yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed it as well. And I'll, I'll, I will just say, as always, we really appreciate your time. And we will be back hopefully in a Friday Reads maybe yes. soon. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've totally lost track. Of, uh, we appreciate your time. We will be back. Until then, 
Happy reading. <laughs> <laughs>